Hi there, Coach Sage Canada, sagerunning.com here with a training talk on how to not bonk or hit the wall uh, in your marathon. A lot of people you find you're running the marathon, the first half might be fine, the first 20 miles or the first 32K might be fine, but then you get to the last 10K or the last 15K, the last you know six to eight miles and you have to slow down, you have to take walk breaks, you have to stop and uh, you feel like you could barely finish and your, your average pace slows way down in the second half and especially in that last six miles or that last 10k so these are some tips and tricks on how to avoid that all right so the first tip is to uh, adjust your training accordingly so try to evaluate what level you've trained at and what your goal time your goal finishing time is and make sure you have the fitness to pull off the pace that you want so for example if you've run a 345 marathon and you want to try to run a 330 that's a really good achievable goal to shave 15 minutes off in that time range uh, and you have to base it on previous training what did you do when you ran 345 are you training at a higher level uh, likewise if you haven't cracked you know 140 or run close to 140 for a half marathon it's gonna be really hard to put together two 145 half marathons back to back to run that 330 so be honest with yourself be honest with your fitness have you been running that pace, uh, faster than that pace in training during long runs? What has your weekly mileage been up to? For a lot of people, generally, the higher the mileage, the better, the more consistent you can be the marathon, as well as doing some long runs where you've actually run faster than marathon race pace for extended periods of time, at least 10K, uh, maybe during a 20 mile long run. You know, you're running six to eight miles at marathon pace or faster comfortably during a 20 mile long run or during a, what is that, 32 kilometer long run, uh, you've worked up to that. And that's if you're running, you know, up to about maybe 100 kilometers per week or about 60 miles per week. So the other key is going to be with race day execution, race day pacing. And ideally for distance running events, you usually want a pretty even split. That is the first half of the race, the first 13.1 miles or the first 21K is about the same time as your second 21K or your, your second half of the marathon race. Now, most people don't even perfectly even split the race. A lot of times you slow down by, you know, a couple minutes, maybe you slow down two or three minutes or five minutes in the second half. That's okay, that's still a well-executed race. That means you probably gave it your all and you raced optimally. Because uh, if you go out too slow and you save up too much and then you come sprinting into the finish, which is more rare uh, in a marathon, then you probably had more left in the tank. You didn't quite reach your potential. But like most people, if you're like me and you bonk hard or you hit the wall hard, in the second half of the race, your last 10K or your last six miles is a much, much slower pace. Maybe you start running 30 seconds per mile or a minute per mile or you know 40 seconds per kilometer, 20 seconds per kilometer slower than your whole pace for the first half of the race. And that's really, that's hitting the wall hard. That's going exponential. That's slowing down a lot. Uh, and to avoid that, we need to pace ourselves at a manageable level and try not to go out too fast because for every second you're trying to bank seconds or bank minutes in the bank in the first half or the first 21k uh you're gonna pay the price probably pretty bad in the last 10k or the second half of the race uh because you know if you're way too fast and it feels easy you know you're, you're feeling good you feels too easy all of a sudden you hit the wall around mile 20 or mile or 32 kilometers in and all of a sudden things totally blow apart you start walking you start cramping up you have sheer muscle failure uh, you, you have to slow down rapidly because you're going hypoglycemic. You're essentially bonking, running out of uh, glycogen stores and slowing down at a drastic rate. So to minimize the chances of doing that, you need to make sure you pace yourself in a very smart way. According to the course, uh, if it has hills, for example, like at the Boston Marathon, it's a little bit different. You need to control yourself more on the downhills early on and then not, you know, totally blow the gasket on some of the uphills as well. You need to be able to adjust your pace accordingly by feel, but uh, it's about being smart early on in the first half when things feel relatively easier, because you know everything comes down to that last 10K, everything comes down to the last six miles. Can you run that at an even pace and not totally fade? That's gonna yield your best finishing time. And I look back on my marathon PRs, it's more even pace. So maybe I slowed down a little bit in the last 10K or the last six miles, but it wasn't by more than 10 or 15 seconds per mile or 
about you know 12 seconds per kilometer at the most so it's it's a more even pace type of race the final tip that goes along with this and probably the most important is race day nutrition race day execution and uh, again this goes with pacing it goes with eating or taking in calories at regular intervals because we all have about 20 miles worth or 32 kilometers worth of glycogen stored in our muscles and, and liver carbohydrate stores basically uh, to run pretty hard for that amount then we're going to run out of fuel and we're going to bonk we're going to hit the wall we're going to go hypoglycemic get really low blood sugar uh, so what i do is i take uh, like most people an energy gel this is my new gel sponsor spring energy myspringenergy.com uh, and it's going to give you that extra fuel uh, to make it without hitting the wall you want to ideally scrape up against the wall and your brain needs a lot of fuel your brain runs on carbs uh, and that's part of hitting the wall is you get really discouraged mentally as well uh, but then your muscles need the fuel. Your muscles need fuel. Carbohydrates are very effective fuel for a lot of people. Uh, and so, you know, when I got 16th of the Boston Marathon, I took four gels during that race. A lot of gels are around 100 kilocalories uh, each. And so we're talking, we're looking at about, you know, 300, 400 calories, if not five or 600 calories. Uh, and the other way you can get calories, of course, is through drinking, uh, drinking sports drink, drinking uh, electrolyte fluid, that may or may not be at the race's aid stations. You want to look up, you know, where are there fluid stations where I could get a drink, uh, at least a drink of water to wash down my gel. I could carry these gels in my shorts pockets. I could carry four gels uh, and take them at regular intervals, maybe every uh, five miles or so. So I'm taking one at five miles, 10 miles, 15 miles, 20 miles. Maybe I'll have a backup gel for that last 10K in case I want another one at 22 miles. Uh, so I have this constant stream of energy uh, and so it's you're helping avoid the bonk if you're pacing yourself well you're taking in these calories same thing with hydration though a lot of uh, muscle failure you get sheer muscle failure because it's such a long distance to run but you could also get really dehydrated running a marathon especially if it's hot out or you have a high sweat rate you lose a lot of sodium and other electrolytes uh, a lot of races will have a sports drink electrolyte drink that you could swig along the way uh, some people even carry their own handheld bottle to sip at regular intervals but you probably want to be drinking uh, you know at least about eight ounces or a cup every hour if not a little bit more and you know It's gonna depend on the weather again your stomach issues how long you are out there exactly But you're gonna have to be taking in some electrolytes. You're gonna want to be taking in uh, Maybe some sips of water along with these gels and that's gonna help minimize your chances of bonking or really cramping up And again, it comes down to pacing it does come down to training But race day execution could make or break a race and you know if you don't have a gel when you need a gel uh, that could be the difference between slowing down rapidly in the last 5k or making it to that finish line and finishing strong with a new personal best. So those are my tips on how to avoid the wall, how not to bonk during a marathon. Thanks so much for following along. Uh, thumbs up if you like this video. Be sure to share it across your social media channels. If you like VO2 Max Productions, be sure to subscribe here. Also check out our running website, sagerunning.com. Sandy and I run our coaching business. We sell training plans there. Uh, we're going to have some more announcements, blog posts, podcasts on the website. Uh, check it out. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more VO2 Max Productions.